Okay, so we are here to finish up our uh, section uh, 5.7. This is going to be part three. This is all by itself. So the last thing we're going to talk about here is Descartes' rule of signs. So what this uh, rule does is it allows us to figure out how many positive real solutions we're going to get or real zeros, how many negative real zeros, and even it could help us to figure out if we're going to have any imaginary zeros. So in a nutshell, what this is saying is the number of positive real zeros of f is equal to the number of changes in signs of the coefficients of f of x or is less than this by an even number. So let's just get right into this example so that way I can kind of show you what this means. So if you look at this example right here, we have a function that is to the sixth power. What we're going to do is we're going to look to see how many sign changes there are. So this starts off with a positive one, then it goes to a negative. So that's one sign change. Then we go from a positive two to a, uh, sorry, negative two to a positive three. So that's our second sign change. And then we go from a positive to a negative. That's our third sign change. And then it stays negative the rest of the way. So there's no other sign changes. That's what you see down here with these arrows. So what that means is, is that that means that we could have either three positive zeros Sorry, I know that's really sloppy, you can't see it. Or, what we can say is not only could it be three, but it could be a less number by an even number. In other words, it goes down by twos. So if there's three possible positive uh, zeros, then that means there also could be one positive zero. Okay, so that's only the positives. Talking about the negatives, the negative would be if we take all of our x values that we have and we input a negative x instead. So if you see down here, what we're going to do is instead of it being a positive x, we're going to do negative x. And notice how they have it in parentheses. So we're going to put all of our x's as negatives in the parentheses. Now, if you remember exponents, if you have an even exponent, it will make it positive. Okay? If you have a neg or if you have an odd exponent, it will keep it as a negative. So watch what happens. This is an equal sign right here. So because the x value, or sorry, because the uh, exponent is positive, or I'm sorry, is even, that means it stays positive. Because the exponent is odd, it stays negative. So you can kind of see what happens. So this becomes a positive x to the 6, stays the same. This stays as a negative, so the negative here and the negative here cancel out to be a positive. Again, it becomes positive because it's an even exponent, so that stays positive. This negative will stay negative, so the two negatives will cancel out. And then we have our negatives at the end. Again, we're, you can follow along and see what happens. So what you'll do is you'll take that negative x and put it throughout your entire thing, and you'll do the same thing. Look at the sign changes. Positive, 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 no change. And then it goes from positive to negative, so that's 1. Then it goes from negative to positive, that's 2. Then it goes from positive to negative. That's three. So therefore, we would have three negative zeros, or we could have three, or sorry, we could have one negative zero. And then all we're doing below is putting it into a chart. So this is what our possibilities are. We know that we know that our total zeros is going to be six all the way down. So we either have a possibility of doing three positive, three negative equals six. We could do three positive, one negative, which means we would have two left over imaginary is six. And we could have one positive, three negative, still two left over. Or we could have one and one and four imaginaries. But it always has to equal the six. So all this is a way for you to look through a problem and you'll know exactly what types of zeros you're going to get right away. Okay, what I want to do now is this kind of brings us towards the, the culmination or the end of our uh, work with finding zeros and factoring and doing things like that. What I want to do is take a, a little bit longer approach to show you how to find zeros using a graphing calculator. Okay, this is important because when you get to the uh, ACT test, this is a good way to be able to find zeros very quickly. And sometimes it's an, a good way to factor quickly. So um, really important for you to be able to do this. So what I want you to do is I want you to write down the steps. So that way you have a record of how to find zeros. 
So you can write down exactly what your steps are. I'm going to show you right on the graphing calculator what to do and just copy down the steps on this note since you don't have a graphing calculator probably in front of you. So your first step will be to go to your y equals and just type in the equation or the function that we have. Once you have the function, okay, so step one is putting the function in. Step two is graphing. So you will graph it and you'll see that it just graphs like normal. Change the window if you need to. You don't have to, but you can. So step two is to graph it. Step three is to change the window if needed. So right now this is pretty narrow. So if I go to the window, I would change my X values. So that way it becomes a little bit wider of a graph. So I'm gonna go from negative five to positive five to widen this up a little bit. And you can see the graph's now a little bit bigger. So that was step three. Step four, this is the most important part. We are not tracing. I do, you never want to guess what your zero is. What you want to do is you want to go to second and calc. Okay, so you see that little calc right there, or second trace. And there's the second option on there is zero. That's going to help us find a zero. So you either hit the number two or just click enter once you scroll down to it. And you're going to come up to something that looks like this. It's going to ask you for a left bound. What that means is, if let's just pretend we're going to go all the way to the last zero over here. Remember, zeros are our x-intercepts. Let's pretend that this zero over here is negative one. I know it's not negative one, but let's pretend that it is. What the left bound means is if we think that it's at negative one, we need to make sure that when we hit enter on our left bound that it's further to the left from negative one. So it's gotta be smaller than negative one. For example, negative 1.2. So in other words, in this way, it's gonna be end up being below our axis because those are all of our x values that are to the left of the zero that we're looking for. So you can hit enter on any of those that are to the left. I hit enter, then I ask for a right bound. The same thing is true. We are looking for a value that's to the right of where the zero is. So if we think that it's around one, then it would have to be to the, or sorry, negative one, then it would have to be to the right of where negative one is, which means it has to be getting closer and closer to zero. So, okay, this looks, and again, you're gonna notice that one of your enters will be below and one of them will be above, but it won't always, the left bound will not always be below and the right bound won't always be above. It depends on what the graph looks like. So I have my right bound, and then the guess it means you have to hit it a third time. Do not forget to hit it a third time, okay? So this step to recap. Once you go to second calc, your left bound you will hit enter, your right bound you will, you'll hit enter, and then your guess you will hit enter, and it will tell you what your zero is. So our zero here is negative 1.233948. And then if we wanted to find the next zero, we would do the same thing. I'll do one more, second calc, Go down to zero, and I'm gonna go over to our other zero. It wants a left bound. So notice this time, the values to the left of this zero are now above the x-axis. So I hit enter above, then I go to my right bound, which is gonna be below, hit enter, and then my guess, I hit enter a third time, and it gives me my new zero, which is negative 0.2520677. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Uh, you use the calculator. I want. Uh, hopefully you wrote those steps down. I want to see those because that's really important for you to know how to do that in the future. Hopefully you'll do that enough to check your work or whenever you're, uh, you know, unsure of the zeros or even factoring in some cases it can help you. So, all right, great. I will uh, see you tomorrow.